So there's a full moon in Aries, 29 September 2023, 0, 9, 5, 7, UTC, 6 degrees, 0 degree minutes of Aries is where this full moon comes in. The thing about it, the striking feature, is that Mars, the domicile lord of Aries, and the sun, the exaltation lord of Aries, both of them are in Libra, exactly opposite the sign of Aries. They're both what we call debilitated when it comes to essential dignity and traditional astrology. Mars in the sign of its exile the sun fallen in Libra and so it really brings to focus with this full moon the notion of unorthodox adaptability and maybe feeling a bit unsettled what might otherwise be a moment of great power and passion full moon in Aries in this case because of the nature of where Mars is placed and of course the sun is always in Libra for a full moon in Aries but we get more of the Libran sense of delicacy refinement and rules that may feel restrictive or may feel inhibiting and remember what Aries is it's the embodying of the idea of force and power and vigor and when those two rulers can't support the Aries archetype in the way that it might be used to, you know, the initiation may be blocked, the pioneering nature may be forced to be constrained. It's not as direct and assertive as we might otherwise want. Aries has this reputation of being brash and just moving out and doing what it wants. And I think with these rulers in Libra, we very much restrain some of that a part of Aries. There might be emotional dependence. There may be a need to check in with others. There might be a need to ask for permission with some of those tendencies. The moon here may even be seen as restless or wanting to break free, but it can't. Could be an urge for just solitude or just challenged under the stress of this push-pull. So when you think about a full moon, it's naturally an expressive time of a fullness, yet Libra can be a ringing in of energy. And those two rulers in Libra, there's a dissonance or maybe a tension here in this full moon of wanting to have this full expression of that pure Aries, but at the same time having to be constrained. Remember the Libra archetype, it's balancing, it's the scales, it's balancing different needs, balancing uh, different priorities and trying to get it exactly right to have the best possible solution to satisfy all individuals involved or all stakeholders. Libra can be associated with diplomacy. Uh, it's very artistic. And so there's this idea of you know, getting things right. Like if you set a dinner table, you want all of the pieces there so people can feel comfortable and supported and people's preferences in terms of a meal are catered to. There's this idea of fairness with the Libra archetype where you appease others, and you kind of yield to others' desires. Yet at the same time, because it's a cardinal sign, there is a, an initiative quality. With the sun then being in Libra, we might have that desire expression which is solar but wanting to bring it into the interpersonal dynamics creating peace softening disputes harmony that's sought especially in our personal relationships through things like rules or with roommates deciding who does what or who's responsible for what chore it can also bring us into this notion of appreciating art in a group think about when someone asks you to check out a song they like you're really captive to their tastes you're, you're made captive and you have to then listen to that four or five minutes of a song you're not familiar with with. That's stulling the personal fire and desire, yet for this larger purpose of connecting with someone through shared appreciation of the arts. You know, that's the solar coming into Libra. There's notions of modulation of pure solar expression and creativity into society. You often see artists, they're out there in passion making the art, but it's those artists that can understand the rules of society, that understand the game of the market. Remember, Mercury rules Libra by triplicity, the planet of markets and money, where you have to bring that pure creativity somehow into the societal constraints in order for the art to fully flourish. You know, Mars and Libra, there's this idea of fighting for justice. You know, we use our martial powers on behalf of other people and on behalf of defending the structures and rules. There's also notions of indecisiveness. We don't have vigilanteism running wild in society. You can't just say that's justice and go out and enact it. You have to work within those structures. And that's where I think Mars can function best here in Libra and might feel inhibiting though, where it's like, oh, how do I solve this? I want to solve it now now, but I've got to go through these more traditional routes for getting that natural sense for justice satisfied. Remember Mars is nearing Ketu, the south node. It's a mere three degrees, just over three degrees here in the full moon. And that can drain the martial power even more where there could be a sort of standstill. What do I do? How do I act? Society is constraining me. Ketu is constraining me. And you may just want to turn inward, look for realization around selfhood. Self-realization is perfect for a full moon moment like this. Let the intensities of the full moon 
moon be processed and transmuted for more of an internal journey, maybe turn that hesitancy and the blocks to the assertiveness into some kind of internal attention, focusing the attention internally to learn more about the selfhood. Remember too, this is a strong cardinal moment. Planets are now starting to pile up in the cardinal signs as they will be for much of the next few weeks. You have the sun, you have Mars, you have the moon now in the cardinal axis. Mercury is going to join on 5 October. Cardinal signs are a desire for motion and change and they want to make it happen with emotion and change. There's a yearning for challenge, fresh horizons, new vistas. So there could be the sense of dynamic shifts that are now taking place as the moon is now full in the cardinal axis. There's going to be a solar eclipse on the 14th of October, first one in Libra in the cardinal axis very soon. And so keep this in mind. All of your desire to come out of that Venus retrograde and Mercury retrograde into the summer we've just come out of. You're now pushing into initiating things, transiting planets very much active in the cardinal axis. It's what you want to see to initiate. And I think here of a character like Judge Judy, it's a perfect Aries full moon character because there's the decisiveness of Aries. If you've ever seen her show, she'll just say, nope, that's not, and then make the decision and just enact her judgment. She's a judge. So there's this idea of, you know, the equilibrium, the justice, the rules that she's working within, but it's quick, fair verdicts that echoes that Aries boldness and then at the same time the restraints of the legal structure so it's really nice here you might just have a sense of no that's how it is uh, right now because of that's what the rules are in terms of the agreements that you've already made this Aries full moon moment could just be like no that's how it's gonna be we've already decided that so I want to come and examine the domicile ruler of Libra Mars and the Sun are in Libra ruling the full moon but those two planets are ruled by Venus and Leo and we get this refreshed Venus visible as a morning star moving faster in Leo. The new self that's been reborn has a big role to play in this full moon moment. Remember, the sun in Libra and Venus in Leo are in a mutual reception, one of the strongest ways that planets can support each other. And so it's this full moon moment, a platform, you might say, for solar energies to converge with Venusian energies in this beautiful blend. I think it means that all that conversation we just had about inhibition around the fire and passion and solar and self, we really can use that to our advantage here in this moment because we can adorn the self. Like instead of making a bold, decisive, airy style action, we can just put the expression in the clothing or in the hairstyles or in the way we smile or look or, you know, one piece of jewelry can send a major message or one shirt. Have you ever seen these situations where people wear like a political shirt and boom, it's a huge scandal or wear the colors of a country, for example, and boom, you're sending a message about how you support and who you support, but in a subtle way, not in a traditionally fire-based way. Beauty itself can be an ideal as well. It's not just physical either, but there's an essence of beauty that Venus and Leo brings. It's the essence of our self expressed through the outer contours. Very profound. I mean, as above, so below, as external, so internal. And so I think we can think about how we're presenting in this moment as a way into how then we negotiate within these extant systems and the agreements that we've already made. You know, you come home, and you're going to enforce some rules, let's say in a con relational context. And you might want to make sure you're sure you smell good. Things we can control in terms of the comfort within the space are satisfied as we get into more serious conversations. And it's okay to celebrate. This is what I want. Bring that into a situation. This is what I feel is fair. This is what I feel honors myself. And sort of standing up for the self by asserting boundaries, for example, classic Libra signification, by asserting and expressing needs, classic Libra signification. This is what I need from the group. And it's solar, Leo, Libra, Venus, and that perfect blend of saying the desires that we have and asking for the rules to reflect and support the needs and desires that we may have. This beautiful mutual reception. You know, there's generosity that can come into play here with Venus and Leo. We can be generous within the people that we're running with at this time. If we have obligations or we're constrained by certain past commitments, you know, you might have a team around you just the way it is in our workplaces with our coworkers and there could be the sense of just bringing that generosity, that, that fire, shining the light of self with that beautiful exterior and that interior exterior dance we were just talking about, sharing it with those around us as a way to you know, bring levity 
to Libra and Libran significations, which are often heavy. Saturn is the exaltation ruler of Libra. You know, in the shadow side, we get too focused on the self, too demanding of our needs to be met. That doesn't go well, but I think that's what the mutual reception can do. It balances out the self and the others in this really elegant way here in this full moon chart, 29 September, 0957 UTC. In the classic Venus and Leo, Sun in Libra, this looping mutual reception between the Venusian and the solar, I think of Cleopatra, the epitome of Venus and Leo, a strong woman figure that's a leader, that is a queen, that has the radiant light of the regal nature of the sun and Leo. Beauty and assertiveness were combined very, very well with Cleopatra, at least in the stories that have come down to us. She was known for her beauty, you know, fell in love with many powerful men, uh, and used her beauty and the Venusian and all of that charisma to strategize and basically take over. I mean, that's the Saturn coming into play here with Saturn as the exaltation Lord of Libra. And we can use beauty and charisma and shining the light of self for long-term strategic gains. It's okay to have a long-term plan, a five, 10 year plan. And in the short term, you know, bringing the, our powers in terms of the way we make people feel good or, or the way we bring beauty and pleasure and comfort to situations as a method for a long-term implementation of a plan. Certainly with the South Node of Libra preparing for a solar eclipse there on 14 October, we're starting to get fate into the conversation. The North Node is co-present with this full moon in Aries. We're getting the nodal cardinal activation right now. And maybe there's lovers or relationships or friends that are coming into your life during this eclipse season build up moment where the nodes are involved. Look for that, like a marriage. I mean, a great marriage, there's nothing like that where you really can take off with yourself because you have the support of a marital home. Venus in Leo, Mercury in Virgo. This is the last syzygy. This is the full moon in Aries with Venus in Leo and Mercury in Virgo. Mercury enters Libra on 5 October, changes the nature of how Mercury expresses. Venus enters Virgo on 9 October, changes that expression. Venus gets weaker when it comes into Virgo. Unique complications with Venus and Virgo and Mercury, of course, shifting into Libra. Still strong for Mercury, but maybe not as strong. So there's a certain weakening when Venus loses the mutual reception with the sun by entering Virgo and Mercury leaves the sign of its exaltation and domicile. This waxing phase of the lunation that includes Mercury and Virgo still. We just saw a deal with the writers and studios was cut, announced last night, ending the strike it looks like. And so there's the power of direct movement with the planets as they gain speed and as the moon is waxing, even in this waning phase, there's elements of being able to capture Mercury in Virgo and Venus in Leo still and that mutual reception. It's just a great chart example. Mercury is direct, finishing the retrograde, moving faster, and the deal is struck. Isn't that cool? Venus and Mercury are the planets of creativity and art and writing. And you see how powerful and potent it is to wait for a retrograde cycle to complete, wait for the planet to begin moving forward, and things can happen. Good things that resolve can happen. Okay, the final fixed sign summer election, the election for this waning phase. I say the final fixed sign summer election because there's really not another fixed sign moon other than this Taurus moon, the one that I am highlighting here. The Taurus moon is 2 October 2023, 0257 UTC, very early in the morning on 2 October. That's a Monday, so it would be Sunday evening in America or later in the mon in Monday down under or in Asia. And this is the last fixed moon summer election because the next Leo moon does not meet Venus in Leo. It tries to meet Venus, but the moon and Venus can join on October 10th in Virgo, not in Leo. And so you're in the sense you're chasing that benefic with that Leo moon. Now you can still get that later Leo moon applying to Jupiter uh, on the 9th, but just to come back here, 2nd October, the election here that I want to highlight, it's a great moment to embrace the richness of Venus and Leo, rules Jupiter in Taurus. So the chart that I'm highlighting here has the moon applying to Jupiter. But Jupiter is ruled by Venus and Leo. Venus and Leo is ruled by Jupiter and Taurus by night triplicity. There is the idea of expressing love, the heart-rending maybe choices we had to make with Venus's retrograde this summer. So many breaks breakups. That's not easy on the heart, but there's a new self that's emerged. And so Jupiter and Taurus, there's a prosperity of that new self. There is the idea of dreaming now and all of the new openings that our new selves have access to after that refreshment of Venus this summer. The picture La La Land by Damien Chazelle. I just watched it again. Very much Venus and Leo, Jupiter and Taurus, Mia and Sebastian, two souls. They come to LA. They have all of these creative dreams. Even Los Angeles is kind of Jupiter and Taurus, isn't it? Ostentatious and big and bold. Uh, Sebastian, he's got a fervor for pure jazz. He loves that kind of true expression. He's staying true to his 
creative self, Jupiter and Taurus, Venus and Leo. Mia has that pursuit of her dream as an actress. I think that's a lot of Taurian with Jupiter and Taurus too, staying with, staying committed. Fixed signs are staying with what we've committed to. Venus and Leo is like the heartbeat, right? The grand romance, the heartbeat of life, the music that's the backdrop of our reality, passionate choices that we have to make to kind of stay with our dreams. And this could be a great election right here to October to touch base. What are you committed to? What are you staying with after everything uh, that was purged away this summer? Probably been some sacrifices and that's what the fixed signs are good for, sacrificing to stay with the dream. And there may be setbacks, you know? I mean, Mercury retrograde, Venus retrograde. What if there were setbacks this summer? What if this appending eclipse season brings some kind of setback or some kind of faded inversion? You know, it's good to just say, what, what are you going to stick with? I think this election on 2 October can offer you time to contemplate that. You know, I love that song, City of Stars from La La Land. I mean, this is an astrology channel. We're looking at the stars. Um, the dreams that can sometimes come from looking up at the sky and realizing how big that the world is and that there's so much available to us. And, you know, the notion that with Venus and, and Leo uh, ruling Jupiter and Taurus and ruling this moon applying to Jupiter and Taurus here on 2nd October, sometimes it's good to just live a little extravagantly. Take a day off if you can. Go buy that extra ingredients at the grocery store. Make a nicer meal for yourself. I think that could be, this could be a great day for this too. It's a waning phase, resting and preparing here for the the eclipse season which is going to arrive next syzygy so that's it that is the video full moon in aries enjoy it enjoy this peak and this climax the last one before eclipse season begins on 14 october you can always go to my website sjanderson144.com check out my reading schedule there talk about your chart layer in some of these astrological cycles in your life and in your chart and i want to announce here really exciting news i'm part of a group of astrologers three of us are launching a new monthly forecast show and it's on Dan Waits's World Astrology Report my friend Dan Waits Steph Koithman, myself, and Dan will every month be guiding you through the astrology the month ahead. These shows are going to be, I think, potent and packed. So go check that out. The first one is now live. All right. Talk soon. Peace.